Okay, so um, in today's session, um, we are going to look at the following question. So the question reads, uh, Mrs. Jessie Mboli is admitted in the labor ward and on admission she gives the following history. The LMP is 28 uh, February 2020, Gravida 1 para 0. On examination, the cervical OS is 60 centimeters. You have been assigned to monitor Mrs. Zimboli using a pathograph. Question A is saying define pathograph. Question B, calculate Mrs. Zimboli's EDD. Then question C, describe the information and how it is going to be used on the pathograph. Then question D, explain five indications of vaginal, uh, for vaginal examination during labor so we'll go straight into the question so question one is saying define the pathograph we can simply define the pathograph as uh, this is a scientific tool used by the midwife obstetrician to monitor the progress of labor maternal well-being and fetal well-being usually opened when the cervical os is four centimeters dilated or above so that is how we can define the pathograph then question b is saying um, calculate mrs Zimbody's edd so from the scenario from the scenario is saying that uh, mrs Zimbody has the edd i mean uh, rather the lmp Mrs. Zimbody has the LMP of uh, 28, uh, 0 to 2020. So to calculate uh, the EDD, the first thing that you need to do is that uh, you need to add plus 7, to, uh, which indicates 7 days because we only have 7 days in a week. So to the number of days, which is this one, you need to add plus 7 then to the months you need to add plus nine because a normal pregnancy lasts for about 90 months so in this particular case if we do the additions you find that we'll get 35 then uh, on the months uh, uh, on the months we are going to have uh, 11 and this is uh, 2020 now when you look at february uh, February the last uh, February it, it has uh, about 28 or 29 days so we'll pick 29 days because some years it may be 29 some days it may be 28 so in this particular case you are going to subtract 29 to the days therefore you are going to end up remaining with 0 6 now in this particular case remember these six days here indicates that the months have now changed uh, the six days are for the following month here which is not anymore uh, november but now december because uh, for for february the month goes up to only 29 days so when we subtract 29 that is a full month think of it as now entering uh, march and we are counting starting from march therefore here it is going to be 12 20 20 meaning the expected date of delivery which is uh, the edd will now be uh, 6th uh, december 2020 so that is how you can calculate um, edd in this particular scenario so let's take for example we have uh, maybe another example let's say uh, this particular woman's uh, LMP is, uh, mm, let's say it's 20, 20th, let's say it's 20th, uh, and then that is 20th May, then 20, uh, 2020. So in this particular case, uh, like I've mentioned, how do we now calculate the EDD? So the first thing, again, you add plus 7 to the number of days and 9 to the number of months so when you add uh, plus 9 to the number of months you add the 2 so here you are going to get 27 then on the months you are going to get uh, 14 uh, then in this particular case we will not 
uh, this woman want to deliver in 2020 but it will go or spill over into 2021 so in this particular case again what you are going to do is that you are going to subtract uh, you are going to subtract uh, um, you are going to subtract 12 from 14 because we only have 12 months in a year so in this particular case when you said you, you are going to end up remaining with 27 when we say uh, 14 minus 12 that is 0 2 now because we only have 12 months in a year it means that the months have gone over to the following year instead of it being 2020 2020 but now it means that it's going to be 27th february uh, 2020 uh, 2021 so because in this particular case the months have exceeded 12 so when we remove 12 from 14 we remain with the two months in the following year not in 2020 so that is another example where or how you can calculate the expected date of delivery maybe something straightforward uh, that we can also use as an example is uh, for example this woman's uh, EDD for example is 20 uh, let's say 02 uh, then 2020 when we say plus 7 plus 9 then we add the 2 here we are going to have 27 uh, then uh, 9 plus 2 that is 11 uh, then in this particular case uh, we have not gone into the following year so this woman will still deliver on 27th December 20 20 so those that is how you can calculate the edd of course for the scenario we calculated it at first okay we can move on to the next question so question two so we have looked at this question we have looked at that then we can go to question c rather which is saying describe the information and how it is used on the partograph so of course the first thing that you do whenever you are talking about uh, such type of equation is talk about aims you need to talk about aims of the partograph itself so the first aim is that it is to monitor maternal well-being then apart from that the other aim it is to monitor progress of labor then apart from that it is to monitor fetal well-being and also just to uh, monitor complica complications that may arise during uh, labor then from there you have on the partograph certain uh, parameters such as the maternal part apart from the maternal part then you have a part for progress of labor and then the other part is for fetal well-being so if you want just to get more information about the partograph uh, be sure to also go through the partograph uh, the session posted which which is posted on the channel uh, so you can follow it on the youtube channel and you'll find the partograph uh, uh, two explained as well now we'll start with the maternal part so on the maternal part what information do you put so on the maternal part the first thing that is there is the social uh, biographic data and on the social biographic data there is name and on name you can simply say because you are writing it in the exam you say i will ask the name of the patient or client in other words for identification purposes and then apart from that you can say uh, I'll also uh, the next parameter is age where you say i'll ask how old the client is in order to rule out risk factors that are associated to being below 18 years or above 35 years then apart from that the next thing that you ask is parity so on parity you need to ask uh, the the client for the number of viable pregnancies to rule out um, uh, 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 certain obstetric history such as intrauterine death or any other that may have uh, occurred previously then apart from parity you need to ask the gravida so on gravida you say i will ask the number of pregnancies regardless of the gestational age to rule out risk factors such as uh, mouth gravida uh, or, uh, or uh, risk factors associated with mouth gravida as well as primal gravida 
Then apart from Gravida, the next thing that you, you talk about is the date of admission that you insert on the partograph. So on date of admission, you say I will indicate the date of admission uh, for reference purposes regarding the duration of, preg uh, uh, duration of uh, preg uh, pregnancy or uh, how long the client has been in the hospital in other words. Then uh, apart from duration, date of admission, the next parameter that you talk about is the time of admission. So on time of admission, you say I will indicate the time of admission to monitor the woman who has been in the labor ward. Then for, uh, for apart from that, you need to talk about uh, how of rupture of membrane that you need to indicate as well on the pathograph. So there you are going to say I will ask the woman if the membranes have ruptured. Uh, and also I'll find out the time in order to rule out prolonged rupture of membranes because they may put the woman at risk of infection as well as the baby such as uh, neonatal sepsis or even puperial sepsis. So once you insert that information which is just at the top of the pathograph, then you can talk about the next parameter which is vital signs. So on vital signs here you can say, uh, but remember in, in normal circumstances on the pathograph what you uh, record first is uh, uh, are the dilatation so that you know which box you are going to use for plotting of all these parameters. But then here the question is saying explain the information and how it is used on the pathograph. So we are going systematically following the pathograph from the top going all the way to the bottom. So the next parameter is vital signs. So on vital signs, the first thing that you check is the blood pressure. And here you can say, I will indicate the blood pressure reading too hourly to detect any deviation from the normal, such as hypertension, which may entail presence of uh, preeclampsia. Then apart from that, the pulse, you need to talk about the pulse. And on the pulse, you can say, I will indicate the pulse rate uh, half hourly to rule out any deviation from the normal such as tachycardia which can indicate concealed antipartum hemorrhage. Then apart from pulse you can talk about respirations and here you can say I will indicate the respiratory rate readings on the pathograph for hourly to detect any deviations from the normal such as maternal distress. Then you can also talk about the temperature and here you can say I'll indicate the temperature for hourly to detect any deviation from the normal such as um, hypothermia which may indicate maternal infection or even cephalopelvic disproportion. So on the vital signs those are the things that you need to talk about and you explain each why it, uh, why it is going to be done. The next part that you can talk about is your analysis result. So part three, you talk about your analysis result and here you can say, I will indicate the results for urine tests such as volume to rule out urinary retention, ketones to rule out maternal ketoacidosis and presence of proteins to rule out maternal preeclampsia. So those are some of the things that you may need to rule out as you do your analysis. Then from there now the next parameter that is progress of full labor. So on progress of labor, the first thing that you talk about is uh, uterine contractions. So on uterine contractions, of course, the first minor heading that you're going to have down there is uh, uh, the frequency. You talk about the frequency of uterine contractions. So here you can, on frequency, you can say, I will indicate the number of contractions uh, 10 minutes and how long uh, the number of contractions in 10 minutes and for how long each contraction lasts in seconds do not whether it is mild moderate or strong then on severity you can say i will indicate the type of uterine contraction as mild moderate or strong and i will indicate mild contraction with the, a dotted box then uh, apart from that you can say i will indicate for moderate contraction using a box with diagonal lines and i will indicate for strong uterine contractions using a shaded box 
Then from there, talk about descent under the same uh, uterine contraction parameter. We are still under progress of uh, labor. So on descent, you can say I will plot how deeper the uh, presenting part has gone into the pelvic brim or cavity using the fifth. Uh, then, for example, if the space between the presenting part and the pelvic brim allows two fingers, then I'll plot the descent to be 2 over 5. So you plot descent using the five fingers, and when you're doing VE, you can also uh, uh, you can also determine this by checking the presenting part and how far it has moved or entered in the pelvic brim. Then apart from that, uh, the next thing that you can talk about is uh, vaginal examination. So here you can say I will indicate or plot the vaginal examination for hourly as this will indicate uh, if the cervix is dilating uh, uh, normally. And you, apart from that, you can say I will plot the findings using the symbol X, which will be connected to each other as this may show if labor is progressing well or not then the, so that is the information that you put under uterine contraction of when you're monitoring progress of full labor then the other information is regarding fetal well-being so on fetal well-being uh, you can check for fetal heart rate and here you can say i will indicate or plot the fetal heart rate half hourly as this will be able to uh, indicate any deviation from normal. You can also say I will indicate the findings on the pathograph using a dotted symbol which should be connected to each other to detect any deviation from uh, normal. Then apart from that you can talk about the LICOR and on LICOR in other words this is just amniotic fluids. So for LICOR, you can say I will indicate the color of LICOR if the membranes are ruptured as well as its consistency as this will help to detect any abnormality. If the membranes are ruptured, I will check for the color and indicate as a C uh, if it is clear. Uh, and uh, I will indicate with the letter B if it is blood stained and i will indicate with the letter m if it is mukonyamu stand as this may help to rule out fetal distress because if you see mukonyamu uh, this will literally indicate that there is fetal distress then the last thing you talk about under fetal well-being is mounding so on mounding you can say i'll plot on the pathograph if the fetal skull bones are opposing each other and you will indicate with a 2 plus uh, if the fetal skull bones are overlapping and reducible and with a 3 plus if the skull bones are overlapping and not uh, reducible. So that is how you explain the information and how it is used on the pathograph. It means that you explain each parameter on the pathograph and exactly how it is uh, used. So the last question is talking about explaining five indications of vaginal examination during labor. Now, some of the uh, indications for vaginal examination is, uh, you know, the first one is when membranes are ruptured. So as soon as the membrane rupture, the vaginal examination will be carried out to rule out things like cord prolapse, the color of meconium and other things. Then apart from that, also you can do a vagina examination to make the diagnosis of labor. You want to uh, determine um, how far the baby has moved in the pelvic brim uh, to rule out any abnormalities that may be accompanied during labor. So you want to just also determine how the cervical ulcer has dilated so in other words, you are trying to make a diagnosis of labor to know at what stage or how far has this woman gone into labor. Then uh, apart from that, you can do vaginal examination to confirm full dilatation of the cervix, which is uh, or which may indicate second stage of full labor. You can also uh, do VE to assess cervical dilatation before giving any analgesia. 
because certain analgesics this woman is in severe pain cannot be given for example if cervical dilatation are way above eight centimeters then apart from that uh, the v is just done um, to assess the progress of labor whether this woman is progressing well according to the time frame or not and apart from that you can also do the general examination to confirm the position presenting part as well as engagement of the of the fetus so all those things you can explain in terms of all these points that i've uh, talked about on the indications of vaginal examination during labor now for you to understand how to manage this question properly you need to also go through the explanation on the pathograph so that you have a full understanding and this information will make more sense okay so now uh, for today's session we'll end here until next time bye